Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the exhibition. I am the Scarlet Seeker, and this is Barotrauma. So this is a very cool game. We'll see how we go. It's given me a bit of capture issues. Um, this is uh, an absolute hyper-simulated sort of su submarine survival against monsters. Uh, if you've ever heard of We Need to Go Deeper, it's like that, except uh, <laughs> hardcore. And a lot of fun with mates. I've been playing with my mates, but um, again, I've had some capture issues. So we might go back and do some multiplayer. I've got a bunch of boys playing it. Um, but for the time being, we're going to just do the campaign. So, essentially, you have a, a little squad of dudes in a, in a submarine, and there's sort of a steam workshop, sort of a very robust uh, editor. And you can get all sorts of really complex subs, and these are little shuttles and that, but we're more worried about... We're going to take this one. I'm f I've made myself familiar with this and the layout of this submarine. It's that sort of game. Like, so... And, and, and it is one... How do I... Like, I'm all for having fun with the boys and just screwing around. You know, me and the boys. But sometimes when everyone just switches on and everyone is in the zone and goes really hardcore trying to trying to solve it. And this is the sort of game where one thing can go wrong and all of a sudden compartments are getting flooded. There's a fire over here. The nuclear reactor's overheated. You've got to fight some monster that's trying to board through the side. and Everything goes sideways. It's the ultimate... Uh, friendship tester. <laughs> so, I love it. Anyway, so the campaign. Um, so, it's still fun single player. You just control some AI, but they are nowhere near as effective as even me and my incompetent mates. We're, we're actually not so bad. So, what you can do, I think probably the smart move here is to hire some crew. You have some starting dollars. Oh, wow, I can afford an engineer. Is that what it's telling me? I might do that actually. I've already got an engineer. Are there... Oh, mechanic. No, too expensive. Security officer. Can't say I've ever seen that before. So I'm going to hire that. Again, I've only tried it once or twice. It is a game that beats you so hard that you're like, man, I kind of want to get better at it. And all these bits and pieces, look, as time goes along, we'll figure out what we'll need to buy because we've got stuff that starts in the ship as it stands. Anyway. I think the gist of it is to try and get into here, but it's still early access, so I don't think that the, the center of this world exists just yet. But for the time being, you pick a destination and you pick a mission. Um, so th this is a colony. What is that? A ha well, I, I can only go to a colony or a colony, so let's go to this one. Molovsk Station. Or oh, we'll see, actually, what's going on, because you can pick a mission along the way. Terminate a swarm or chemical shipment. Chemical shipment for 500 credits. We might do that just to get our, our baby steps on. So you get bugger all money <laughs> and it's all very hard. So, so let's let's get into this. So it looks like XCOM. It's sort of like an ant farm side on sort of thing. Alright. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do, bear with me, I'm going to... God, I, I played this a little bit, and then I played a lot multiplayer. So these are our crew, and I can actually manually change and control anyone, but for the time being, I'll stay the captain. Um, and just to give you an idea, everyone's wearing headsets, and they all have batteries, and if the batteries go flat, that you can't communicate to them anymore. Like, it, it, it's hardcore. Um, we're going to tell you to go operate the reactor. Go power it up. You can see we don't have any lights or anything like that. Um, and what we'll do is... That's cool that the security officer you can say operate weapons. So we're going to put... We've got two coil guns on this boat. One under the bottom and sort of one up here towards the back of the ship. That's the front to the right. Um, so we'll say, get on the gun. We'll put you on fire at will. Um, and then we'll put this other bloke on the gun as well. You can see, now these are sort of their specializations, but you can then go and tell them to do this other stuff as well, okay? Alright, cool. So we're sort of, uh, I'll give you a quick tour of the ship real quickly so we know what we're working with. 
just making sure that I'm still capturing. Like I said, been having a little bit of a headache. So there's some co-op sort of movement to it, which is quite funny. For whatever reason, you can hold spacebar and go floppy. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so this is the main airlock of the, of the ship. And you can see out there, that's, that's the ocean outside. That's one of the guns there, actually, on the left. And this is a connector to bases. Um, but if I press that, that'd be bad, because, especially with that door open. You have to um, manually open and close the main airlock there. But these doors here, you just click on them, and once you go through, they, they close on their own. Um, but you can manually close them as well, if you're still in proximity, because controlling water and all that's a thing. Now, this is our cargo that we're transporting here, the chemical crate, and that's cool. These are like diving bell sort of suits that you can chuck on if you need like that. Um, but you don't want to waste them because there's, there's O2 in them and then you have to take it down to O2 generator. We've got like emergency supply stations. So there's a emergency diving mask. So if there was a breach and you were getting flooded, you'd immediately run to put one of these on. There's a welding torch to try and fix that. So, so if you were trapped, if you thought fast and you were in a flooded compartment, you should be able to rectify it. And then there's the blood packs and bandages and flares and just some little bits and bobs to see that these general supply crates should be all the same. But that's the design of the ship. This is sort of like medical. So if you look at this, ethanol, fentanyl, uh, morphine. There's a whole... Can I bring it up here? Yeah, okay. So there's a health... There's a health sort of uh, system. Uh, depending on your capacity, it, the guy is doing a bit of guesswork on, well, should I take morphine for a stub toe? I don't know, you know. So it is very hardcore. This is sort of our main storage. We've got all sorts of things, body armor, guns, handcuffs. In multiplayer, you can have a traitor mechanic where someone's actively trying to kill someone else. Um, and these are like your ammo boxes. It kind of reminds me of the Matrix in, uh, in their, like, mech warriors. So this is a large thing that we can carry. Can I just double-click it? See, like, you carry it around, and you would carry it over to the guns to re- to re-ammo them, basically. Oh, whoops, I just dropped that. I'll just put that back in there. Cool. All right, cool. So let's just continue along. Down here's ballast. Um, if you're not really across what a submarine does, essentially to go up and down, you need to change your um, your ratios in a ballast of how much water versus sort of air and free space. Well, free service doesn't really matter, actually. But, but essentially, you take in and eject water, and this is our rear ballast as well. So that affects how you go up and down. Here's another sort of, this is sort of like engineering because this is where our main, this is, well, our only engine is back here. And, um, and there's some pumps and then there's some engineering equipment there as well sort of thing. Stuff is always taking damage over time. So you have to, um, you know, like degrading. I could jump on this gun actually, potentially. Well, no, no, these guys are looking through this periscopes. One gun on the top, one on the top bottom. And this is the ammo, and this is the recharge. They also take power draw from the from the ship. I'm trying to go fast because we're using up power and sort of wasting time as well, but that's okay. Here's where you would um, refuel oxygen uh, tanks. And, and this is sort of all of our electrics. And, like, if you have a look... I don't have a screwdriver on this guy, but all of these individual wires along the wall connect everything up, and if they burn out, you will lose certain areas. So, like, it's actually a fully functional complex machine. We've got fire extinguishers, we've got some more engineering bits and pieces, some fuel rods. This is the uh, reactor, and you can see that we have a fission rate here, and we also have turbine output. Someone needs to do repairs in the reactor room. Um, I'll tell you what, how about we... How about you do it? Can you just do it? If I tell him to do that, he'll sort of go on patrol. Cool. Okay. You can set this to automatic control like that, and it will monitor the output requirement. It's got low temperature. Um, ultimately, what we could do... Actually, I'll show you now. We could put another fuel rod in there. You have to be careful with it. You have to be... This, is a, this can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. All right. We're going to take manual control. Essentially, this is the turbine output, the electricity output, and this is the fission model inside the uh, inside the reactor. So if we bring this fission right down, it's going to start setting off alarms. We're going to put in the new rod. Cool. And our output's going to go big. But because I pulled it down, we're going to just... Come on, careful. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got to keep the fission low for the turbine output. And this way, on autopilot, it should be able to keep the temperature up fairly well. But we're going to be using twice as much fuel. But that's... I'm generally quite happy with running it that way. Now, that other dude's just cruising around. He should still be on repair mode. Yeah. Yeah, so he's just running around repairing things. Okay, so that's pretty much the whole of this ship. Um, I guess the last sort of thing to look at is the, the sort of the driving cockpit. Yeah, so see all these bits and pieces need fixing, but he's on it. Anyone could really do it, but he's on it at the moment. Okay, so if we go to this console, this is not our ship, that's the base. This is our ship, and you can see all the areas. There's the ballast tanks. These are the areas that I took us on a tour of, okay? Now, out here is the ship. I need someone to repair devices. No, that's okay. Thingo's already repairing everything, so that's okay. And I can have a look here at where we're at for all, uh, all the stuff. Okay, so we're going to undock. You can do manual and autopilot. We're just going to pull away, and then you can do this sort of fine-tuning movement to undock. You actually have a movement vector. You'll see. Okay, now we're free from it. So we could put it on autopilot. In fact, for the moment, we'll just put it on autopilot and um, we've got a Moloch station because that's our destination. Now, the other, th other thing is we have a passive sonar. And this is sounds bouncing around that we're detecting that aren't necessarily being emanated from us in a sort of initial point. Now, if we do an active sonar, we will ping... Um, you can do directional ping, so you can sort of, you can change that angle, right? And just send it in specific areas. Uh, it's okay, this slide is a bit of a pain, how it goes around in a, a clock. Essentially, if you're going to ping, you're probably just going to do the 360 ping. And there we go, we can see the sort of cavern walls for the ship that we don't want to run into or anything like that. So this is how you mostly have to uh, drive. Now the issue with pinging like this is there's a lot of sea monsters. There's little things that burrow through the hull, and by little I mean our size. Look, here we go. In fact, let's go. Yeah, if they're firing, you can hear the guys firing. All right, so they're against the hull. This is a problem, hang on. Um, I'm gonna take control here and move the vector. So you've got to be careful. I'm putting a lot of load on the engine and it's only being automatic. Okay, so... Alright, so this is alright because, you see there, they're not moving. It's pinging the dead bodies of the monsters, right? So what we'll do is we'll put it on autopilot and I'll send it to Molovsk. Right, that. That's fine. Um, I'm going to do a quick lap. Need someone to repair to it. No, no, that's right. You do it. You're on repairs. I have, I have my concerns. If something attaches to the hull, you've got to be careful. Like, you have to eyeball it sometimes. So you sort of go around and you listen. You know? I think we're okay. But it helps to inspect. I probably don't need that ping on, because the autopilot's pretty good at not needing it. Oh, ah. See, there you go. You can see little fishies outside. You can sort of see a little bit outside. What are you doing? That guy's going to work, though. Alright, anyway. Um, and you can see them talking about the repairs and just doing general banter and that as well. Okay. So we might... We'll take, we'll take manual control again. And drive through. Okay, so now we've got enemies. Sort of got to be cognizant of where our gun... Our weak point is the front top. Yeah, the bottom gun's really singing now. Alright, hang on. Looks like we've got dudes attached to the hull. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We'll see if we can shake them off. Sort of got to get an idea. Is it the dead body or is it a, an unfriendly? Yeah, see, look, it is an unfriendly. See, I got a little bit away from it and the dude started shooting it. Come on, come on. I'm having a little bit of a hard time shaking this thing off. All right, here we go. This will be the big shake. Here's the chance. Listen to the gun. Yeah. Good. Target down. Nice. Nice. Alright. 
But you can see, like, the, the length of the vector is affecting how hard I'm putting the gas on. And again, you, you put that much strain immediately on the turbine, you can have reactor problems. Anyway, so we'll go autopilot and we'll go Molovsk again. And I'll go back and... I'm going to check the front, because that thing was attached to the front for a long time. Sort of want to... Because I'll try and burrow through the hull. That's what they do. Oh, that's nothing to worry about. That's just the ballast filling up for us to go up and down. But hey, you don't want to suffocate. Anyway, dude's repairing systems, so he should be all pretty... This is pretty good. Our, our crew's looking after themselves fairly well. Um, I think they'll re-ammo on their own as well. Okay. What have we got? What's that behind us? Alright, Molovsk Station. Again, I'm going to take charge because I like driving. I'm, I'm a little bit of a lead foot in this thing. It's one of those things, the, the quicker we go, you know, the less fuel we're going to go through because we're going to have to buy more fuel. Um, potentially stay out of trouble even. There we go, look at that. Nice little quick mission. Alright, so here we go. I don't know if I've ever docked manually before, so we have to be careful here. So old mate's just running past to repair in the engine room. Oh, careful, careful, don't crash it. There we go, we've gone into sort of fine-tuned docking mode. Oh, it's autopiloting for me, that's cool. Okay, I'm alright with that. Auto dock. Yeah. Nice. So he's running around doing repairs. I prefer to keep two dudes on the guns at all times. Because if you let them barnacle onto the hull, it's a fucking nightmare. Alright. Oh god. Are we docked yet or what? Was the autopilot doing maintain position, perhaps? No, no, I want to put it to Molovs. Here, here we go, it should auto-dock. Look at the little... The little vector going ballistic. Is it docking on its own? I'll just put it on that passive sonar. Yeah, look, it's doing it. It's doing it. God, is it though? Oh my god, are oh, we gonna crash? Oh, we're crashing, we're crashing right now, fuck. Are you kidding? What are you doing, ship? Oh my god. I need to fix this now. God damn, god damn, god damn, we're too high, we're too high. airlock sort of sorting itself out. Cool, we can turn that sonar off. Nice, he's on patrol. Repairing everything, very cool. I don't believe I can tell them to like... drop off the gear, so I might have to do that myself. Okay, so... I, don't, I can only carry one of these large items at a time. So... I'll take these... Board. Go up into the base. Nice. How cool is this? I think I'm gone. I think this is how you do it. 
Into the station, yes. Oh, there you go. I probably didn't have to carry it up with me. There you go. Chemical shipment delivered. Very cool. Everyone's okay and healthy and happy. That's not a not a bad first sort of first sort of effort. So there we go. We've moved along a little bit, and I guess ultimately we need to like look at these breeding grounds. What are they about? Journey into the center. That was a very fortunate sort of first episode. But, um, but the dollar amount of the missions should give you a bit of a rough idea. So if we look at this, let's see, Terminator Swarm, Medical Transport. I don't think, uh, you don't want to not do a mission. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I guess ultimately you just want to go as deep as you can, right? So look, we could do a medical item transport 500. That was graspable. Maybe terminate a swarm. Killing a Moloch. 5,000. Now, there are things bigger than my ship out in this game. So like, to give you an idea. So it's pretty, pretty epic. All right, anyway, look. A good first start. We've done a, a little mission and that. Let me know what you think of it, guys, because I love this game. I'm happy to play the campaign some more. Uh, and again, I'll see if I can fix my... um recording issues because I had an absolute blast playing this with other human players. It, it is a bit fiddly, a lot of port forwarding and all that involved, but if you can get a little crew together, absolute baller of a game. Anyway, team, thanks again for joining me. We might just leave it there for the time being and we'll pick back up on the next one.